Hello everyone, RJM3 here. Welcome back to What If, the alternate history series where I speculate what could have been if history had gone differently. Have you ever wondered what it would have been like if we ever encountered extraterrestrials? Like if one day aliens had landed on Earth and they arrived in advanced spaceships and brought with them technology that was incomprehensibly ahead of our own, we would be entirely at their mercy. And that is exactly what it felt like for the Native Americans. Despite the fact that people existed on both hemispheres for about the same amount of time, the technological gap between the Old World and the New World was astounding. When the Europeans, in the midst of the Renaissance, had found the New World, only some natives had figured out bronze tools. Why was this the case? Well, it all came down to a simple matter of livestock. Domesticatable animals are a requirement for any civilization to progress technologically. Eurasian civilizations had cattle, pigs, chickens, horses, sheep, goats, camels, etc. They were used for food, travel, trade, war, to tame other animals, to build greater cities, to push technological innovation. American civilizations, meanwhile, only had the llama. All other wildlife in the Americas was either too fast, too strong, too aggressive, or all of the above. While American civilizations did get pretty far in scientific fields that did not necessarily require domesticated animals, like architecture and astrology, for the most part, the Americas were perpetually trapped in the Stone Age. To add injury to insult, without livestock, the American Indians did not live in close proximity with animals in highly populated areas, so no diseases were able to make the jump from animals to humans in the New World, leaving their immune systems pretty weak. So in the fateful year of 1492, when Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue and established the first permanent connection between the two hemispheres, old world diseases such as smallpox and tuberculosis ravaged the Americas. 90% of the native population was wiped out by disease in just a century, leaving the land ripe for European colonization. It's easy to blame Columbus, the conquistadors, Europe, or the United States for what happened to the natives. While the bloodshed they directly committed was terrible, it was a drop in the bucket when compared to the number of deaths caused by disease. Even if the 15th century Europeans had wholeheartedly embraced pacifism, the moment the old world joined with the new, millions of Native Americans were always going to die. The game was rigged from the start. The American Indians were dealt a very, very bad hand. But what if they were given another chance? If the Americas actually had some domesticatable wildlife, could this fate have been avoided? What if the Americas were as advanced as Europe? So how can we change history to give the Americas more livestock? Well, horses actually originated from North America at some point, horses migrated to Asia across a land bridge that used to exist on the Bering Strait. Then for some reason, horses went extinct in the Americas around 8,000 to 12,000 years ago. So our initial point of divergence is that horses never go extinct in the New World and go on to play a pivotal role in the development of ancient American civilizations. Which is good, but not good enough. Here's where things get a bit strange. All other domesticatable animals originated around the Fertile Crescent, so, in order for the American Indians to have equal potential for technological development, a sizable number of cattle, pigs, sheep, etc. will all have to somehow migrate from the Middle East, all across the Asian steppe, through Siberia, and make it into Alaska, all while not setting off the butterfly effect, which could potentially make the history of the old world unrecognizable. Yeah, it's a bit silly and unlikely, but it was either this or having some livestock be magically teleported to the Americas by alien space bats. Now that the pieces for this scenario are in place, there's one matter I have to confess up front. If you were expecting me to talk about the Aztecs, the Incas, the Iroquois, or any other famous pre-Columbian civilization and how they would be affected, prepare to be disappointed. You see, by introducing several new species into the continent and inciting massive technological and social changes so early on, the existence of those civilizations from our timeline would have been erased and replaced by new ones entirely. Also, since it is impossible to predict what names important locations in the Americas would be called in this alternate timeline, I will be referring to all New World locations by their real life names for the sake of simplicity. 
This entire scenario is mostly speculation, so take everything I say up until 1492 with a grain of salt. To formulate this new history for the New World, I will be basing it off of major trends and developments seen in the history of the Old World. So let's start at the beginning. The year is 4000 BCE. Rivers are the veins of human civilization. All ancient civilizations were founded around rivers. Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Indus Valley, and China. So in the Americas, the first civilizations would be founded on the Mississippi River Valley, the Columbia River Basin, the Rio Grande, the Colorado, and the St. Lawrence. Now, there actually was a Mississippi River Valley civilization in our timeline, but it didn't come into existence until 800 CE. This alternate, ancient Mississippi Valley civilization becomes the fertile crescent of the New World, and the battleground for the first American nation-states. Some of the civilizations on the Great Rivers start off with a single unified identity, like Egypt, the Indus, and China. Others start off as several smaller states, but eventually unify under a single state through war and conquest, like with Mesopotamia under the Akkadians. Imagine armies of Native Americans in bronze armor, carrying bronze weapons, some on horseback, fighting for war and states. Now, determining which civilization would have which characteristics is difficult since I don't have much information to work with, but judging by geography as well as ethnic and cultural diversity of those regions at the time, I would speculate that the Mississippi, Columbia, and Colorado would sprout expansionist multi-ethnic empires, while the Rio Grande and St. Lawrence would sprout states made up of only one ethnic identity. Politically, these ancient American states would be mostly identical to each other, ruled by a highly centralized autocracy. Though there could be exceptions to this rule, like the Indus Valley, which was a theocratic state ruled by high priests. Speaking of which, new religions would be established in each civilization. These new religions would be polytheistic in nature, and would remain so. The rise of monotheistic religion in the Old World was caused solely by the religious experience of Abraham thousands of years ago, and it is improbable that such an unlikely event would be repeated in the New World in this alternate timeline. The cities built by the American Indians in this alternate world, packed with people and animals, become a breeding ground for new diseases to mutate and plagues to spread. As time passes, the clusters of humanity huddled against the rivers start to spread out, settle new lands, and establish new tribes and kingdoms. Contact and trade between these states increase for a couple thousand years. That is until the Bronze Age Collapse. The Bronze Age Collapse was a massive societal collapse of the Bronze Age civilizations of the Eastern Mediterranean with far-reaching consequences to the rest of the Old World. The general consensus is that the collapse was most likely caused by a general systems collapse, where those societies grew far too complex and unsustainable. When the land used for farming grew less fertile over time due to soil erosion from excessive use, it led to famine. The damage caused by this famine snowballed into multiple catastrophes striking the Bronze Age civilizations all at once. Given the societal similarities, the chances of the Americas experiencing their own Bronze Age collapse in this alternate timeline are pretty high. Just like in Eurasia, most American civilizations crumble under the weight of this catastrophe, with only the stronger states barely managing to survive. Fast forward to the years 500 BCE to 500 CE, and the Americas have made a full recovery from the Bronze Age collapse. Bronze tools would have already fallen out of favor and been fully replaced by iron. New ideas such as democracy and republicanism begin to take shape in the New World. People start to settle in Central and South America and establish new nations. In fact, one of these new civilizations could have the potential to become the great empire that defines American civilization like how Rome defined Western civilization, or how China defined Eastern civilization. I believe this to be the case because like the Mediterranean was for Rome in our timeline, the Caribbean would be prime real estate for any potential empire in terms of conquest and trade. Whatever state that emerges from the lands of Mesoamerica will go on to conquer the islands of the Caribbean, many of its neighboring kingdoms, and warlords, and become the political and cultural core of the Americas. Further south in the Andes, another great empire could arise that could challenge the supremacy of the Mesoamerican Empire, similar to the centuries-long Roman-Persian rivalry of our timeline. If Mesoamerica gets too overzealous, overextends itself, and it ignores corruption within its own ranks, it could collapse like the Roman Empire. Otherwise, it could continue to exist and reform itself mostly through civil war, just like China has for thousands of years. 
Circa 600 CE, the Americas enter the Medieval Age. Balkanized into many smaller kingdoms, constructing great castles and walls around many of their great cities, and begin to utilize siege warfare. The Americas are marred by wars fought over religion, succession, and rivalries between royal houses or dynasties. A handful of plagues also ravage the continents, thinning out the population. During this period in the Old World, various nomadic hordes such as the Mongols, Huns, Slavs, Magyars, Seljuks, and the Turks, who were previously ignored by their neighbors as their lands were seen as useless and unimportant, spread out on horseback and conquered many unsuspecting kingdoms. So perhaps in the Americas, a similar horde could arise out of the Great Plains and conquer neighboring states not protected by geography. The Great Plains horde could make it all the way to the Atlantic, they would likely assimilate themselves into the cultures of the lands they conquered, as was the fate of many nomadic hordes in the Old World. Around the year 1000 in our timeline, centuries before Columbus was even born, Norse Vikings under the leadership of Leif Erikson had actually sailed from Greenland and established a settlement in present-day Newfoundland, called Vinland. But due to low supplies and conflict with the natives, Vinland was quickly abandoned after a single year and forgotten. But in this alternate timeline, how would this first encounter go? Instead of settling in a land of unkept wilderness and primitive tribes, the Vikings could instead spot a great city, comparable to London or Paris. Surprised at seeing a civilization this far away from the known world, Ericsson chooses to turn back to Greenland to recruit reinforcements for a potential raid. However, no plans for such a risky endeavor are ever followed through. A Norse myth would soon spread one of a mysterious civilization just across the Arctic. As 1492 draws closer, we have to ask, which world would discover which world first? Would any American empire invest in a journey to cross either the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean? Well, in our timeline, the Spanish Empire sent Columbus across the Atlantic in order to find a new route to trade for spice in Asia after the Ottoman Empire had cut off any Christian Europeans from the Middle East. Columbus and many of his contemporaries, believing the continent of Asia was larger than it actually was, thought it was possible to sail directly from Europe to Asia across the Atlantic in a short amount of time. As for the Americas, even in the improbable event that a hostile empire took over a vital choke point for commerce like Panama, I doubt it would encourage any Native Americans to travel all the way across an ocean. Accurate knowledge of both the circumference of the Earth and the width of the Americas would reveal that such a journey would be both overwhelming and impractical. Ultimately, it would be easier to just stick to alternate routes on the continent. Now, as I said earlier, you should take everything I've said so far in this video with a grain of salt. With the divergence point so massive and so far in the past, predicting what could have happened is next to impossible. I, I could be completely wrong about everything. So you're probably wondering, if this scenario is so unpredictable, why make this video? Why did I even bother at all? Well, while everything before 1492 in this scenario is uncertain, what will transpire after 1492 is something I am more than certain of. October 12th, 1492. Columbus's expedition arrives at the New World on the island of San Salvador. To the shock of Columbus and his crew, they learn there is an entire continent full of great civilizations that has been around for thousands of years just across the ocean. After checking out a few more islands in the Caribbean and developing a better understanding of this new world, Columbus's expedition turns back to Spain to report this revelation to the rest of the world. News of this discovery is met with great enthusiasm and curiosity by Europe's political and religious leadership. It is an opportunity for resources unique to each continent to be traded, for knowledge to be shared, perhaps to even develop a better understanding of humanity itself. More trips across the Atlantic are approved by both sides over the next decade. Truly, the coming years will be an era of great enlightenment and prosperity, and they're all dead. You see, while the old and new worlds would have both developed strong immune systems, an immune system can only be useful when it's fighting a disease it's already familiar with. And the odds of all the alternate New World's diseases evolving to be exactly like the diseases of the Old World are practically zero. This time around, both hemispheres would be overrun by unfamiliar germs. The human race had just stumbled into not just a pandemic, but an extinction-level event, the likes of which have never been seen before. Over the next century, 90% of the population on both hemispheres is wiped out, reducing the total population from 500 million to just 50 million. 
The world enters a great new dark age. Nations collapse. Religious institutions falter. Knowledge is lost. Culture is erased. Technological progress is halted. Social progress is reverted. It is unknown how long this dark age would last. It could take as much as a whole millennium for humanity to recover. If you want to imagine what an alternate 2022 would look like, think of a planet splintered among various, small, backwards, feudal states. In conclusion, while what happened to the Native Americans was terrible and unfair, it could have been far worse. Perhaps this is precisely why aliens haven't visited us yet. Anytime two spacefaring civilizations encounter each other, both are destroyed. Maybe the aliens know about us, but already went through such a catastrophe long ago, so they only observe us, but refuse to make contact, out of fear of destroying us or themselves. And if in the future we ever find alien life, we better keep our distance too. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. This has been RJM3, Alternate Historian. Have a nice day.